Orderly people make harsh judgments of moral transgression. I think that probably goes along with the hierarchy. So I think for orderly people, there's a pretty steep hierarchy of good versus bad, or maybe good versus evil. And that each of the tiers in that hierarchy are clearly demarcated, and they're demarcated morally. One of the things that distinguishes the top of an orderly hierarchy from the bottom of an orderly hierarchy is that the people at the top who are following the rules fall into the metaphorical category of pure. And the people at the bottom who aren't following the rules fall into the metaphorical category of impure. And you can also see to some degree, if you use your imagination a bit, how that's mapped onto dietary preferences, especially in religious systems, because there are pure foods and pure ways of preparing foods and impure foods and impure ways of preparing foods. It looks like it's something very deeply rooted inside people. I think it's probably also, potentially also, associated with the fact that at least since we've had agriculture and reasonably large settlements we had to be pretty orderly with regards to our agricultural storehouses because if you're not orderly when you store food then rats and insects eat all of it or it gets moldy if it's damp and then it gets rotten and then you can't eat it and then you starve to death it's not a good outcome i think there's a number of factors that have congregated together to align the disgust sensitivity system and the orderliness system and the system of harsh judgment and the ideas of purity and impurity to bring them all into one form of alignment. Disgust is considered to be one of the basic human emotions defined by a strong revulsion and desire to withdraw from an eliciting stimulus or event. It's a very embodied emotion. So if anxiety makes and excitement makes your heart race, that's one thing, but disgust makes your stomach churn when it's associated with vomiting and tremendous aversion. It's also very, very unpleasant emotion. It might be the most unpleasant emotion. It's hard for modern people to judge that because our societies are so well organized that we almost never come into contact with anything that's disgusting. It's all put away. And you can understand why, because many things that are disgusting are actually contaminated and produce pathology, they're illness generators. So it's not an arbitrary judgment. Physically disgust is accompanied by a distinct facial expression involving constriction of the oral and nasal cavities. Remember when we watched the Crumb video, one of the things that the Crumb brothers typically got from women that they were trying to approach was a disgust facial expression. And that seems to be associated with the idea of lowly status and contamination and the desire to to close yourself off from the offending source. Evolutionary models of disgust propose that this emotion evolved to help us avoid contaminated or harmful foods or other potential sources of disease such as sexual contact. We know that if you arrange creatures in a dominance hierarchy and then you run a, path, a pathogen through the population, an infectious disease, then the population tends to die from the bottom up, which means that the animals or people at the bottom of the dominance hierarchy who are chronically more stressed are much more likely to be carriers of infectious agents and much more likely to die from that. Now I don't know what the stats are for sexually transmitted diseases. I should have looked that up. But I would suspect that the same thing probably applies there. That as you construct a socioeconomic hierarchy, the probability of, trans of acquiring sexually transmitted disease decreases as you move up the hierarchy. In addition to its role <coughs> indirectly helping to expel harmful foods from the body, disgust also forms an important component of the behavioral immune system, the suite of psychological mechanisms that aid in the detection and avoidance of potential contaminants before they can make contact with the body. The other thing that we should never forget is that the reason we can all sit here so clean and well put together is fundamentally because the plumbers produced a transformation in Western, North American and Western society a hundred years ago. And by getting rid of all of the contaminants that were associated with poor plumbing, we cranked our life expectancy up tremendously. So it's another example of the actual relationship between sensitivity to disgust and longevity. We also know that conscientious people have better standards of hygiene than unconscientious people, and they do 
live longer. Disgust may have its origins in the protection against physical contamination. A number of studies have implicated disgust responses in moral decision making. Inducing disgust responses, whether via a foul order, a disgusting work environment, or recalling a disgusting experience, led individuals to assign harsher punishments to others who had committed moral transgressions. Harsher moral judgments could even be induced following the consumption of a bitter drink. Bitter taste tends to evoke a disgust response not because all bitter tastes are poisonous, but because most poisonous tastes are bitter. In addition, the same disgust-related facial expressions are observed in response to unpleasant tastes, disgusting photographs, and receiving unfair treatment in an economic game. Concerns about cleanliness and feelings of disgust have likewise been related to political attitudes. Situational reminders of the importance of physical cleanliness, such as asking participants to wipe their hands with antiseptic wipes, tends to increase self-reported political conservatism. Such a finding is consistent with the notion that purity tends to be valued more by conservatives than by liberals. Individuals who report being disgusted more easily also tend to hold more conservative political views on topics including abortion, gay marriage, tax cuts, and affirmative action. In addition to the effects that have emerged when using self-reported disgust sensitivity, more conservative political views have also been associated with stronger physiological reactivity to disgusting images. In particular, a large literature has converged on the notion that there are two core dimensions of conservatism, resistance to change and tolerance of inequality. Resistance to change reflects the extent to which people wish to maintain the status quo, while tolerance of inequality reflects the acceptance of an unequal distribution of resources and opportunities within the society.